Hi, it's Roger Hamilton with another episode of Entrepreneur TV. And in this episode, I'm gonna go through and give you the details of exactly what China's plan is, how this will change things, and why this is important to you. This is Xi Jinping, the president of the People's Republic of China. Two years ago, this happened. China's Xi allowed to remain president for life as term limits removed. Yep, that's right. The biggest country in the world abolished term limits for Xi, making him supreme leader for life. After becoming president of China and already being the head of the Communist Party and the head of the nation, he also became head of the army and head of the police. And through his purges, he has either sacked or jailed over 1.3 million politicians, which includes all of his opposition. So what does he intend to do with all this power? In this video, I'm going to show you the three pillars of what he calls the Chinese dream. I'm Chinese myself and a lot of our students are from China. And we also have a million students in Europe, in Africa, all over Asia and in America. And so I really believe that it's essential that we all get prepared for what The Economist calls the Chinese century. Z is literally looking to replace the American dream with the Chinese dream. And this article sums it up. What Xi Jinping wants. China's leader is determined to turn this country into the biggest player in the history of the world. Within a month of becoming China's leader in 2012, Xi specified deadlines for meeting each of his two centennial goals. Okay, so number one, China would double its 2010 per capita GDP to $10,000 by 2021 when it celebrates the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party. And by the way, China is already one year ahead of schedule on that first target. Its GDP based on purchasing power parity has already overtaken America's to become the number one in the world. The second goal is to become the world's leading nation by 2049. That's the 100th anniversary from the creation of the People's Republic. And at that point, you already have China being three times the size of America's economy. And by the way, if you're thinking there's no way that the US is going to become overtaken by China, that's exactly what she wants you to think. This book here, which is called The 100 Year Marathon, China's Secret Strategy to Replace America as the Global Superpower. This is by an uh, author called Michael Pillsbury. Pillsbury was a US advisor to China and he said that there were nine strategies that she has to be able to achieve his China dream. And one of those strategies includes induced complacency to avoid alerting your opponent, where you encircle your opponent, and by the time they realize that you're all powerful, it's already too late. And a second book that I recommend is this book here, The China Dream. This is by Liu Mingfu, which actually spells out exactly what she's trying to dream is, and also what are the three grand pillars that make up the dream. So I'm gonna go through what these pillars are with you and just how fast China is achieving them. Number one is economic supremacy. Xi has put economic dominance ahead of military dominance. And if you're asking when will China's economy overtake America's, it actually already has. From BBC, how the country became the world's economic miracle. In 1978, exports were $10 billion, less than 1% of world trade. By 1985, they hit 25 billion. And a little under two decades later, exports valued 4.3 trillion, making China now the world's number one export nation. This happened just a year ago. China overtakes US in rankings of world's richest people. A Credit Suisse survey found 100 million Chinese versus 99 million Americans in the world's richest 10%. This happened just a month ago. The Fortune Global 500 is now more Chinese than American. The Fortune Global 500 list is out this morning. The big story is this. For the first time, there are more Fortune Global 500 companies based in mainland China and Hong Kong than in the US, that's 124 versus 121. And in Taiwan's companies and the greater China total jumps to 133. Fortune goes on to say, it's hard to overstate the significance of this change. When the Global 500 list first came out in 1990, there were no Chinese companies on the list at all. Now, by the way, if you're thinking, wait, isn't China meant to be communist? How did it end up becoming so capitalist? The reality is China's wealth today actually makes it more capitalist than America. The change actually came under Deng Xiaoping first and then under Xi, where a new type of capitalism was created called state capitalism. So in China, with state capitalism, the Chinese government is proactively moving capitalism forward with massive state projects. In America and the West, it's a totally different type of capitalism called free market capitalism, where the government doesn't proactively drive it forward, but is more reactive to managing through monetary policy, through taxes, what's going on in the economy. And we can see exactly which one today 
is being more dominant. And just to show you the scale of this, here is a view of 113 cities in China which have a population of over a million people. And keep in mind that in America, there's only 10 cities with over a million. The growth of these cities is actually driven by the Chinese government, which actually spends over four times more as a percentage of GDP on infrastructure than the US does. And if you're thinking, well, at least the US is still the financial center, that's also changing. Of the five biggest banks in the world now, four out of the five are from China, one's from Japan, and zero are from the West. Now, if it was just about the economy, which was just China looking after itself, that would be one thing. But Xi's ambition is also about global domination, which is what brings us on to the second pillar. Pillar number two is geopolitical supremacy. This second pillar is summed up by this article. What does China really want? To dominate the world. By 2049, Xi promised China would become a global leader in international influence and would build a stable international order to replace the US. So 2049 is D-Day. That's the 100th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. That's 29 years from now, and Xi will still be in power then. Chinese strategists and academics are talking openly about building a new China-centric global economic order, a vision in which a global network of partnerships centered on China would replace the US system of treaty alliances. So how far has China already got on this second pillar? As well as being the world's largest exporter, as America has become the world's largest debtor, China has become the world's largest creditor. From legendary investor Jim Rogers last week, six months ago, the United States was the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. Never has anybody been so deep in debt. Since then, the US has increased its debt by trillions more. If you gave me a few trillion dollars, I will show you a very, very good time. From Harvard Business Review earlier this year, in total, the Chinese state and its subsidiaries have lent about 1.5 trillion in direct loans and trade credits to more than 150 countries around the globe. This has turned China into the world's largest official creditor, surpassing traditional official lenders such as the World Bank, the IMF, or all OECD creditor governments combined. So China is actually using its creditor nation status to be loaning money out to governments, which then owe them for their future growth. The most visible example of this is the Belt and Road Initiative, which Xi first talked about as soon as he came to power. This is a 21st century upgrade to China's Silk Road, where you have got the belt, which is effectively connecting China to all of Europe and Africa. And then you've got the road, which is effectively the shipping lines, which also connected by sea. As you can see from this map, it covers 70 countries, 65% of the world's population, and will eventually result in 40% of all of the world's trade running through this system. Over 130 countries have already endorsed the project, and a notable exception is the US itself, which is against it. So pillar one is economic supremacy, pillar two is geopolitical supremacy. And you're thinking, well, at least the West is still ahead in technology, that's pillar three. Number three is technological supremacy. Forbes magazine describes China's grand strategy as a geotechnological one. It sums it up, Chinese President Xi Jinping's signature project, the multi-trillion dollar Belt and Road Initiative, represents the largest infrastructure project in history. It offers a platform for China's long-term strategic shift around advanced technologies. Now, when I share with my fellow entrepreneurs in the West just how far China is ahead already on technology, most of them are in disbelief. And that's mainly because the Western media aren't really reporting on what's happening on the other side of the world. So here's a few recent developments just to give you an idea. China has more unicorn startups than the US. The top three unicorns in the world are all now Chinese. And Financial, which is about to have a record IPO in Hong Kong and Shanghai, uh, we've got ByteDance, which owns TikTok, which we're all hearing about in the news right now, uh, and also Didi Juching, which is basically China's equivalent of Uber. Like, so the largest unicorns in the world are all now coming out of China. On artificial intelligence, here is an article from this week. Has China already won? You bet. On Tuesday, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt concluded that China will pretty much be running things from now on. He said, the Chinese model is a vision of high-tech authoritarianism, which is incomparable with the way America works. I'm not saluting it, I'm not endorsing it in any way, but I'm telling you to take it seriously. They're going to end up with a bigger economy, more R&D investments, better quality research, wider applications of technology, and a stronger computing infrastructure. Xi has a digital Silk Road plan, which is called Made in China 2025, and Forbes explains it. China, the first artificial intelligence superpower, and I'm actually gonna drop all of these different links down below so you can go and do your extra research yourself, where it includes a link to China's full artificial intelligence development plan, 
uh, where they basically are not waiting until 2049. This is all going to happen over the next five years. And what is the US's reaction to all of this? It's to sanction those same AI companies which China is championing, but that's not actually slowing China down. In fact, China is sprinting ahead with 5G. This is from just a few months ago. China is on track to sign 70% of 5G smart home contracts by the end of the year, putting it far ahead of the rest of the world in deploying the next generation communication standard. So basically, we're going to be seeing 200 million Chinese already on 5G when the rest of the world is just catching up. And as well as dominating the next generation of mobile internet, they're doing the same when it comes to mobile payments. In fact, Ant Financial, which is having its IPO, they already are the fourth largest institution in the world, largely built on mobile payments. And it doesn't stop there. With blockchain, with Xi's backing, China looks to become a world leader in blockchain as US policy is absent. Xi has launched BSN, which is the world's largest nationally backed blockchain solutions network. And in the middle of the crisis, this happened, China launches national blockchain network in 100 cities. So state capitalism has now evolved in China into state techno-capitalism. And this goes to the heart of China's plan, when it can ultimately replace the US dollar with the digital yuan as the new global reserve currency. I did a video just a few months ago talking about all of the tests that China is now doing with the digital yuan. As everyone is focusing at the crisis, they're focusing at already accelerating their plans. I got comments at the time, which is like, oh, China's not going to move that quick. Well, here's the news from this week. China to launch major expansion of digital currency trials. The country's Ministry of Commerce said earlier Friday, the digital currency, dubbed TTEP, for digital currency electric payment, would be trialed in major cities across the most developed regions. These include Hebei Province, the Yangtze River Delta, Guangdong Province, and the cities of Beijing, Tianjin, Hong Kong, and Macau. So all of the major cities in China are now rolling out with the digital yuan. The speed with which China is moving on all these fronts is breathtaking. So for those of you who commented, China dominance could never happen, never say never. And if you just take notice on how quickly things are moving, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be giving you ongoing updates as everything unfolds in the coming years. Here's a headline from this week. Donald Trump is losing his tech war with China. The reality is that under Donald Trump, the United States is indeed losing to China in two important spheres. As the FBI has already put it, in economic and technical terms, China is already a peer competitor of the United States in a very different kind of globalized world. In other words, China is rising and the US is falling. I hope by now you can see that not only does Xi have a plan, but he is executing it at speed and at scale. And he is making the most of this crisis to accelerate this plan. And by the way, I'm going to do a second video on exactly what the nine strategies of Xi is and what is the big difference between the Chinese dream and the American dream. So like I said earlier, do make sure that you subscribe to keep updated. And I'll also give you the link at the end of this video to a recent video I made on Putin's master plan because in both cases, it's the long game which is beating the short game in the world today. And look, depending on where you sit on all of this, you might think this is good, you might think it's bad, you might think it's very good, or you might think it's very bad. So if you don't like what you're hearing, don't blame the messenger. My whole focus here is to make sure that I give you the facts of what's actually happening out there right now, and then you decide on what actions you should be taking. The main thing is to remain aware and awake. And as it says in the art of war, in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. As always, thanks very much for watching. And if you found this video useful, please do give it a like. I'll add your comments down below as well. And I'll be seeing you on our next video.